Hi, Ken W6BZY here with a video. In this video I'll show you how to set up WSJTX and CQR log so that when you log from WSJTX it will go directly into CQR log. And at the end of the video I'll show you how to set up trusted QSL so that you can also upload your logs from CQR log to Logbook of the World. So let's get started. At this stage we have WSJTX up and running and we have CQR log installed. Now all we need to do is get them talking to each other and working together. So let's get started by making sure that WSJTX is installed and ready to go. And it looks like it is. Jumped right into our frequency. I have it set on 20 meters. And all looks good. Now what we're going to do is we are going to set it up so that WSJTX will log directly into CQR log. As we have it set up now, we have the radio selected. We have USB 0. You'll notice it's working on USB 0. So we're going to Close WSJTX. Now we're going to open CQR log and under the TX section, the transmit section, we're going to make sure that we have CQR log set to USB 0. So we're going to go on to preferences. going to go to the TX section, TX control, TRX control, transmit and receive control. And there's our ICOM 7300. It's set up to USB 0. The port number is important. It's 4532. We need to remember this. The host is localhost. I'm actually, instead of using localhost, going to put in the uh, address, the IP address. I just feel a little more comfortable doing that. Localhost should work. So we're going to go under File. We're going to go down to Preferences. Uh, first we're going to, sorry about that, we're going to open our window here that shows uh, files in the logbook. And you can see we don't have any. And we're going to uh, turn on Remote which is going to launch WSJTX, which won't run because we haven't adjusted it yet. But we need to get it going from CQR log. Now we're going to go under and we're going to change the configuration. We're going to go to File and Settings. Under Radio, Instead of an ICOM 7300, we're going to set it up so that it works from rig control. So we're going to go up to the top and then work our way down. We're looking for rig control D. And it's under ham lib net rig control. There you see it. And I'm going to type in the numbers 127.0.0.1. But local host should work just as well. Uh, this to me makes good sense because uh, it shows up in other places when you're using the program. Uh, but And I'm putting in colon 4532. That's the, uh, that's the part we got from CQR log. And now I'm testing it and it uh, is working. So we're going to look at reporting and there's that 127.0.1 again. Uh, and that's for UDP so that you can send uh, local messaging uh, between programs. So now we're going to see if it works. We're going to look for a signal and see if I can make a QSO here and get it into the CQR logbook. 
I got to fix the sound here one of these times. Uh, it's uh, still a little hot, so I'll have to do that, but not right now. Right now we're looking for a signal to come in that we can respond to. So we're on 20 meters uh, in the morning. There's a signal. Let's see if we can get that one. Uh, So uh, that should be, it's a four, so it's a real strong signal coming in. I'm double clicking on that first one, so it'll speed the, the exchange up a little bit by leaving out my uh, grid square. The third one down, you can change it from RR, our fourth one down, you can change it from RRR to uh, RR73 if you want. I don't have it changed that way. I've left it. But you, that's another of the two. You can actually change that one by double clicking on it between the two. So they got me at a minus one, so I'm giving a pretty good signal. So I sent them an RR73. They gave me a 73 back. So apparently I did change that to an RR73. Uh, so I'm running 40 watts on my radio, and I'm going to type under comments. I like to keep track of where these uh, logs are coming from. So this is a Raspberry Pi OS, and I'm going to retain those two. Now when I click this, it should wind up over in the logbook. Uh, and hold your breath. There it is. WA5SQA. By the way, I did go after I recorded this and checked, and it did log into uh, Logbook of the World. So right now we're going to go through that process, and uh, we're going to add uh, Trusted QSL to our uh, programs, TQSL, but uh, you have to type Trusted QSL in here. Uh, in the, to get it from the repository. Taking a dear, dear sweet time, but there it is. And we're going to check that box and then we're going to click apply. And it's going to call for my password. This is your Raspberry Pi password. This is version 2.4.3-1, which is a fairly recent version. There were some problems with 2.4 when it was first issued out, but they've got the bugs fixed, so it should work just fine. Okay, so now that it's been installed, I actually went ahead and looked for where it was, uh, but that's not necessary. You can skip that part. Uh, what we need to do is find out, so you see here, download and upload to Logbook of the World. So we want to upload, and here's the part that's slightly tricky. Uh, you see where it says your QTH name. We have to get that. And uh, to do that, we first have to find Trusted QSL. It's under Accessories down at the bottom. And let me say that uh, you need to move Trusted QSL from your other source. So what you do is you go in and you open up Trusted QSL like I'm going to do in just a minute here. And I don't want to do a new sign up. Don't say yes. And don't do any of this downloading unless you're a guru because I could never figure out how to install it on Linux. So I just go with what's in the repository. It's not the newest version. But when you have on your other source or other computer, here I paused the recording and went and got the copy off of my other computer. To do that, what you do is you back up your station location and then take that file and you move it and it looks like this, tqsl.b, 
TBK. And that's a little tiny file and you just move it with this USB stick over to the Raspberry Pi and then load it. Uh, you import it. And it gives you your station location. And what we need to do is we need to find exactly the way that Logbook of the World has this station location recorded. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to... Uh, I was tempted to take that, but then I decided, no, nah, let's make sure. So I went, if you go into Edit Station Location, and if you go to the last page, down at the bottom it says Station Location Name, and it looks to be exactly the same, so probably didn't need to do that, but I wanted to make sure it was just the way the program had it. Now you go back to uh, CQR log, and you're going to paste it where it says your QTH. Make sure that you leave the quotation marks where they are. Now it's a little bit tricky, but what you want to do is just highlight it, then right click and paste in what you copied. And there it is. You notice there's quotations at each end. You only have to do this once. So then it'll stay in the program. So you don't have to keep doing it. I only, I'm only i exporting all the QSOs because there's only one. And as I started to say before, I did double check and make sure that this call sign wound up in my logbook of the world uh, logbook. So it does work. Even though there's a zero there, I don't know, maybe that means zero errors, uh, but it did upload that uh, call sign to my logbook. So we're going to open up the folder, and inside the folder we're going to see several files. 